What is going on live warriors? It's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about if a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. I'm going to give you the short answer in this intro and the short answer is no. But if you want to stick around to find out why you may be gaining weight because of this answer being no, I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay All right, guys, quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? With an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. For only $16.50, you can click on the top right-hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always, guys, thank you for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so is a calorie a calorie? This is one of the questions that I get a lot in my comments section this is one of the things that's constantly just being debated even in my comment section many people like to tell me why do you promote calories in versus calories out if a calorie is not a calorie it's not the same it's different so i'm going to explain calories in versus calories out 100 matters right off the jump that matters there is an element that you need to understand when it comes to that, but there's also a dynamic element that you need to understand when it comes to the human body. What are the macronutrients and even the micronutrients that are surrounding that energy? Now, in terms of weight loss, if you did a one-for-one -one mathematical equation in terms of weight gain and weight loss, just weight in and of itself, 2,000 calories a day of anything will net you the same weight gain or weight loss loss the number itself is the thing that throws everyone off the fact that everyone is hyper focused on that mathematical equation and not looking at the micronutrients behind everything and the macronutrients behind everything just looking at the macronutrients for example fats in and of itself burn less calories per calorie consumption based on the thermic effect of food than carbohydrates and then carbohydrates burns way less based on the thermic effect of food than protein so what i'm saying here is if you ate a hundred calories of protein and you ate a hundred calories of carbohydrates and you ate a hundred calories of fats each of those macronutrients will actually leave you at a different calorie net balance at the end of the day because 30 percent of protein that you consume has to be metabolized and turned into heat just so that it can digest and break down 100 calories of protein with carbs is more about eight percent and with fats is more about two to three percent so it's very easily metabolized and there isn't a high thermic effect for fats as opposed to protein so simply upping your protein intake by 20 or 25 percent can help you lose weight just by doing that because of how much calories that burns and if you up the calories of protein while keeping your calorie consumption the same you're burning more calories per day simply because of its thermic effect many studies looking at low carbohydrate intake with a high protein intake actually show greater weight loss in the groups that have a higher protein intake with a low carbohydrate intake versus groups that have a higher carbohydrate intake with a low protein intake so in the respects of how the biochemistry of just your body works when those calories actually are consumed changes so much in terms of how much you burn now you see this still doesn't change the calories in versus calories out portion of the equation because of the fact that you're burning 30 percent of those protein calories just to digest it means that those are calories out versus the calories that came in that's part of the calories out equation It's all in tandem and in line with if you do uh if you're sedentary and how much calories you burn there those are the calories out for someone who's sedentary for someone who's working out as well as the thermic effect of food it's accounted for in that calories in versus calories out model but also shows why a calorie is not just a calorie if someone says hey just eat 12,000 calories it doesn't matter 12,000 calories is 12,000 calories and you're going to lose weight regardless no 
12,000 calories of protein is not the same as 12,000 calories of carbohydrate. In terms of the macronutrient element, that is why a calorie is not just a calorie. And then moving on to the micronutrient aspect of this. Uh, first of all, you want nutrient dense foods because over the long term, that's going to net you a better possibility for burning more fat, losing more weight because your body is high in nutrition and is working more efficiently. For example, you need a good amount of fiber. You need a good amount of omega threes. Those are super important. And then if you even look at breakdowns in terms of fructose versus uh, glucose, fructose is not utilized in the body it doesn't have a primary biochemical role in the body other than its calorie count literally just the energy that it provides through the calorie that it adds to your body or uses to or your body uses to burn is all that it provides and it cannot even be burned by all of the tissues in your body it can only be burned by the liver so if you're consistently eating fructose at a high clip, even if it's 12,000 calories of fructose, because all of your body cannot use that energy and break it down and only your liver can use that energy, you have a higher risk of stuff like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, a higher risk for things like type 2 diabetes. You have a higher risk for insulin resistance, which in and of itself holds on to a lot of fatty tissue. And studies after studies have shown that although maybe subcutaneous fat is not affected in terms of the calorie number in and of itself, the visceral fat, the fat that's around the organs, that is affected by eating things like fructose versus eating something like glucose. What glucose does in the body is that it provides the brain with its primary source of energy, the energy source that your brain wants. Your brain wants glucose. If there's glucose, the body's going to break it down and bring glucose to the brain. If there is no glucose, if there's nothing available, what the body's going to do is go into the beta hydroxybutyrate in the liver and provide you with ketone bodies in which you burn fatty acids. This is where something like intermittent fasting or a very, very low carbohydrate diet comes into play because you basically make your body burn body fat to provide that energy to your brain. 12,000 calories of fructose versus 12,000 calories of glucose go through different biochemical pathways. So yeah, they're both 12,000 calories, but they're not the same at all. Now, if you're wondering where do you eat fructose versus where do you eat glucose, it's easy. Most processed foods, most soda, soft drinks, you're gonna have fructose in it. Where you find glucose, is in more natural kinds of foods. Things like green or leafy vegetables, whole grain bread, pasta. There you will find glucose, like just exclusively glucose. Some vegetables contain fructose, but many of the green leafy vegetables contain glucose, just glucose, which is actually what your body can work well with if you're going to take in sugar. Now, sugar, just sugar, which is sucrose, normal sugar, is a 50-50 mix of both fructose and glucose. So it is not the optimal thing. So if you think that you're pouring sugar into whatever you're eating, that you're just adding glucose, you're actually adding a mix of both fructose and glucose. If you want just glucose, that's going to be found in things like vegetables, and pasta as well as whole wheat bread but the reasons that many businesses and companies use fructose is because it's very very sweet and is much sweeter than glucose but still both of those are sugar and still 1200 calories of each of those it does completely different things in your body also you have to look at the glycemic index as well because the glycemic index can show what can raise blood sugar quickly which can be very detrimental over time and create chronic illnesses over time if left unchecked so 100 calories of an apple versus 100 calories of jelly beans are two different things that do completely different things in your body apples are low on the glycemic index while jelly beans are high on the glycemic index. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, then I shouldn't eat fruit because fruit contains fructose. But fructose by itself is unnecessary because all it gives you is caloric energy with nothing else but 
apples are very rich in fiber and then it has a high chew resistance at the same time so you're actually breaking it down in your mouth before you consume it and you're mitigating a lot of the fructose elements that can create things like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well as applying and adding more fiber to your diet which is incredibly beneficial so it isn't the same to eat an apple versus eating ice cream it's not the same one of them is processed and may not provide much nutrient to you at all while the other is not processed and provides a great amount of nutrients also the hormonal elements that come into play are very different uh, for example it's hard very very difficult this is why many people when switching to a high protein diet lose weight as well when allowed to eat ab libitum which means that they can eat as much as they like Studies show that they don't even get close to the amount of calories that they did on a normal everyday diet where they're eating mostly processed foods because the satiety of eating things like protein is really high. You have to force feed somebody 800 calories of protein. Meanwhile, you can scarf down donuts that equate to 800 calories without flinching and still feel hungry. So the satiety is lower uh, when it comes to these high processed, high sugar foods of the same calorie count versus something like protein. And studies show that ghrelin levels are increased after you consume things that are high in processed foods, high sugary foods. Your ghrelin levels go up so you're more hungry. So you end up actually eating more and more after eating those processed foods. So it's all piling up and working against you. And there's other micronutrients that are different depending on something being processed versus something being whole foods. So you have to be very cognizant of these things. Because of all of those elements that are working against you, the retention in visceral fat, increased insulin resistance, decrease in insulin sensitivity, increase in possible pre-diabetes or actual type 2 diabetes, increase in hunger hormones, reduction in satiety, less thermic effect of food. When you compound all of those things, when you put them all together, when it's all said and done, does the actual number 1200 versus 1200, is that the same? Yes. But is it the same when it goes into your body? Absolutely not. So when it's all said and done, a calorie is not just a calorie. Hopefully this video has helped you guys. And of course, as always, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.